As the progression of snowboarding continued, the sport entered a new professional era with the introduction of the TTR tier system, consisting of one to six star events and an overall TTR World Snowboard Tour champion. Mathieu Krupel from France was the first man to win the title and after a consistent 2005-2006 season, he celebrated an historic moment in competitive snowboarding. I got a letter from, uh, from the French president, uh, Jacques Chirac. I think it's great for the TTR too that uh, it's uh, recognized by, uh, by somebody like this. The TTR also introduced a women's tour and the first overall champion was Cheryl Mass from the Netherlands. It's hard to realize sometimes that I'm like a world champion because it's just like the first thing and it's new and I wonder how everybody's going to look at it. And, but I'm super stoked to be the first one to get that title and to grab it and I'll have it forever. But 2006 was the year of Sean White, who went on a winning rampage and cemented his status as snowboarding's first true global superstar. 2006, I won every event I entered. You know, rail jam, slope style, I won the Olympics with half pipe, and then I finally won the Open. So that was like my once in a lifetime scenario. I mean, I, I, I don't think now I could even have a season like that. I mean, I grew up riding with Sean, and I just remember watching him and just being so blown away by the stuff that he can do and just like how he did it, and it was just so unreal. Riders like Sean White pushed the trick progression, but it was Germany's David Benedict at the 2006 Aaron Style in Munich who first landed the trick that would shape the future of contest snowboarding. The double cork. However, the contest was won by Travis Rice with an equally innovative double backflip backside 180, and snowboard history was once again written at the legendary air and style contest. Down the level of riding, it's never been like this in a contest ever. Just straight up, ever. Like X Games, well, you know, name whatever you want, whatever contest, and just shit on this. Heavy. A few months later at the 2007 Arctic Challenge, Terry Harkinson stepped back into the limelight on home soil and broke the highest air world record with a 9.8 metre backside 360. Once again, the Harkin was back. I think, yeah, when you come up to that much speed and try to hit the lip perfect, uh, it's, uh, it's a little risk factor, but when it goes well, it, it feels great. The weightlessness and, uh, you know, you have really uh, long time to hold your grabs and uh, uh, it's, it feels great. I think that says it all for this contest, you know, Terry coming and being able to do that just puts it to a whole new level and so I'm just so happy that I was a part of it. Kevin Pierce claimed his first six-star victory by winning the overall quarterpipe title at the Arctic Challenge and then dominated the contest scene the next season when he became the 2007-2008 TTR World Tour Champion. Winning the TTR title was just like so unbelievable. His incredible season started with victory at the Aaron Style in Munich where he stomped a cab 12.60. You know, it's such an amazing feeling to, you know, drop in, do a cab 1260 and just have the whole crowd, whatever, 30,000 people just lose it. That's a cool feeling. His next triumph was at the Burton European Open in Lax, where it came to a legendary showdown with Sean White in the halfpipe final. It's kind of like now, it's like nobody can beat Sean and it's like he's up on top and, you know, he's the best rider. At that point in my career, I loved pressure, and I would just thrive on the pressure, and I'd be like, oh, he threw that, I'm gonna have to lay something down. Just having that pressure just kind of drove me to get to that place that I knew I needed to be in. It was just like crazy I was able to step up at the right time. With a memorable run, Kevin Pierce claimed the title and challenged Sean White's dominance in the half pipe. But to win the TTR Tour crown, he had to defend his quarterpipe title at the final event of the season. 
there was so much pressure on my shoulders. Just like, if you don't do this, then the season's blown for you. He didn't blow it and won the Arctic Challenge and also the TTR World Tour title. To be able to, you know, have that accomplishment and, you know, make it that far in snowboarding, it was just a total dream come true. Uh, my name is Peter Piroinen. I'm 16 years old and I come from Finland. Having come through the junior ranks at the open events, Finnish rider Petu Pironen started to dominate the pro contest scene. The 2008-2009 season saw him win one six-star event and take four second places, giving him his first overall TTR title. Everything went pretty good. Can I say a perfect season for me and hope it goes like that, like in future. When I him and he didn't say a word and you were like, hello, you know, knock, knock, knock. And when he rode, it was so smooth, it was so perfect, it was so technically correct that you sometimes didn't realize what he had just done. One word for Peitu, this kid is talented. He can do the quarter bite, he can do the big air, he can do the half bite, he can do the slope style. And there's so few people in the world that are at that level. Petu even stepped it up in the 2009-2010 season, taking three six-star victories and three more six-star podium places. The overall TTR victory was his again. Petu, he's a champion of all champions. He's probably the best all-around contest rider right now. The reign of the Iceman was far from over, and after winning his third consecutive overall title in the 2010-2011 season, he went on to bag his fourth World Snowboard Tour title at the Arctic Challenge in 2013. Over the last few years, women's contest snowboarding also continued to progress, with riders like Tora Bright, Jamie Anderson, Shirsty Buas and Kelly Clark leading the charge. You know, every year the tricks change and they progress and um, I love being part of that and I love kind of being on the forefront and shaping that and, and showing people what's possible to do on a snowboard. But it was the young American Elena Hyde who became the first woman to land the double, a trick that had become the must-do contest trick for men and changed the face of women's competitive snowboarding. The double course started happening and you were like, oh my gosh, this is as big as it gets. And now it's like the triple course going on and it's like, oh my gosh, I can't imagine anything else. So it's like, how far can it continue to go? The first man who was credited with landing the fabled triple cork in a contest was Torstein Horgmo at the 2011 X Games. But it was Canada's Mark McMorris who landed the first true triple cork with three full off-axis rotations a year later. It's a strange thing that happened, the, the invention of these tricks, because it, it, it dramatically changed the way the sport. With triple corks now being landed in big air and slope style contests, the technical level of snowboarding had reached new heights. Young riders like Mark McMorris and 2012 World Snowboard Tour champion Staley Sandback are constantly pushing the levels. In the last decade, the contest scene has grown into a worldwide movement, with superstars like Sean White bringing events to places as far afield as China. The World Snowboard Tour is today considered the leading event series in the sport and in 2012 celebrated its first World Championships in Oslo, Norway. Now the inclusion of the X Games into the tour has truly united the competitive side of freestyle snowboarding. What started with racing straight lines down a hill is now a constantly developing mainstream sport. And as long as the mountains are covered in snow, then competitive snowboarding is here to stay.